Let me just, yeah. Right. So um, you guys have done water dropping in and ripples being created, right? That was that what we did last, uh, you guys did last week? Or oh, Susan, you did that with the water no. drops? Water no, drops of water. With you you taught us. Yeah. I did drop. Tuesday. I did Tuesday. Okay, so that was something Susan did in the Tuesday class. It was Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> so um, maybe Susan, you could show what you did because I'm taking it forward from there. And mm -hmm. uh, you guys can watch the Tuesday class as well. Yeah. Let me, yeah, let me just spotlight her. Oh. Okay, so painting of ripples. <clears throat> um, and this affords us a very good opportunity to take the, take the topic into some kind of abstract painting. Now, we don't do too much abstract painting, but as you can see, there are a whole lot of shapes and lines mm. that form which have uh, their own internal harmony there is a rhythm there is uh, there are uh, there are gaps at the right point so you have negative space and you have balances so we can use this to create some very interesting abstracts mm -hmm. uh, thanks susan so i'll i'll share this video also with you uh, later so maybe over the weekend if you have the time just see it if you can do it then that's perfect the pictures I'm sharing now are um, the next step to the to drawing ripples um, So abstract painting is something that is equally fascinating, but uh, also in equal parts, a little confusing. How do you appreciate abstract art? How do you then move from uh, realism, realistic art to abstract art is, is a very nice, um, it's like a nice detour that you can take from what we do normally in class. And as far as um, abstract art is concerned, very often you will have, um, most abstract art is not representational. So it does not represent physical objects as much as it, it takes us into a world more of representing an idea. So, um, in the process of painting or in in art, there are many ways of communicating a thought. Some can be very direct, like you you have a recipe, you show these uh, elegant looking fruit uh, food items and write the recipe around it. So this is very direct. And how you uh, compose the picture with all the food items becomes your task. But when it comes to um, more abstract ideas, uh, which also need representation, like, for example, emotions uh, or illustration of poetry or uh, something that is more um, uh, that, that just one object may not be enough. <coughs> Sorry. So like, for example, if I'm speaking about solitude, I could I could pick up, uh, and this is the topic that we're doing in uh, calligraphy, right? The poem yesterday was solitude. So if I were to write a poem on solitude, I can think about the most direct thing that I can think about is show maybe a silhouette of a person. And that's what we think of as solitude. And that is like the, first grade level in terms of creative thinking when it comes to uh, communicating with images. But let's say 
this is the most obvious idea. How about let me try something else? So then you come to a second grade level of creative thinking. And then you start expanding the idea of solitude from a personal solitude to other kinds of solitude. It could move to animals, it could move to birds, it could move to uh, objects even. It could also move to inanimate objects like buildings or environmental objects like rocks and clouds. So you have to you have to start thinking in terms in in terms of levels of communication. The first level, and as much as I say first standard, second standard, third standard, it is a progression in our own ability to think creatively, but they are pretty much parallel to each other. So level one and level nine, in terms of illustration, can be on the same plane. But in terms of thought, one might be more effective than the other. And that you need to learn to start judging it just by yourself. Uh, when, when we say one could be higher than the other, in terms of creative thought, it should not be the prerogative of an art critic or uh, somebody who you admire to tell you that this is a higher thought. So I want you to be able to start building that hierarchy of creative thought and how one becomes better than the other, or slightly more evolved than the other, not better. I don't want to confuse you. So in the case of abstract thinking, uh, the moment we remove uh, the stuff that the, the first idea that comes to us then we realize that we this was like one percent of our world of imagination which means now we have 99 percent of imagination available to us i think you are all at a stage now where you can slowly start moving into the 99 percent but first we need to move at it from the other direction so we are, we are taking the backdoor entry into this 99%. We are not going to apply um, a visual to an idea. We are going to apply an idea to a visual. The, the purpose of the class is to be able to communicate a visual. And then see in how many different ways that visual that you develop mastery over uh, recreating can be applicable for different kinds of abstract thoughts. So I have uh, shared these pictures, which are all just photographs of reflections. Um, and these could be, the reflections are, um, so I will speak about this a little bit to give you an idea of my train of thought. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I don't want to bias or cloud your creative thinking by feeding you the creative idea behind these visuals as I see it. So uh, just in the back of the page that you're going to paint this on, as, we, as I scroll through these images, I want you to write down some words, whatever comes to your mind. Uh, in order to think about the words, see how uh, how you gel emotionally with the following. You will have texture. You will see some forms. You will see some colors. You will see some composition. Apart from these, there could be other elements that might be evident also. You might see the reflection of a recognizable um, feature. So I want you to just look at it and think about one or two words or two, three words. There's no limit on how many you can think of and write them down. So I'm starting backwards. This is the, um, of the series of pictures I've sent you. This is the last one. I'll come back to this again. So we can flip back and forth for a bit. Aditi, the screen is showing your cell phone. Uh... My cell phone? Yeah. It's not showing the pictures very clearly. 
फिजिकल You can write that. This is three, four, and five. And I think there's one more. Oh, a couple more. Sorry. Okay, so we have this as the last one, second last, so the seven pictures, so seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Okay, one more time. This is one. Two, four. Okay, so are your words uh, similar in nature? Have do you want to share what you have written for the different words? We can go. Over yeah, the... I think mine are on a single strain. <laughs> do you want to start with with this backwards? Okay, let me go ahead because. Yeah. uh this is my state of mind in the last few days mm. starting with the last one which you said we start in reverse right okay so you want to give us the uh, names in reverse i will go through. yeah i'll okay. give you the names in reverse <laughs> yeah so this is disturbed for me mm. okay the next one is confused okay <laughs> the next one is anger okay then the third is oh uh, i've just written oil spill hmm. but i think it also means uh, that i'm veering towards something else mhm mm the next one is a little positive mm -hmm. the word just came up hope okay yeah this is the crux of the whole matter 
Hmm. It's I call it the budget. This is the budget. <laughs> 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 oh my god! They are bleeding us dry. Yes, my whole thread is about the budget actually, <laughs> and the one with the yellow reflection is. I have been talking to people and saying that I want to migrate to some Central American country in the Caribbean <laughs> or something. So there is a ray of hope and sunshine. Oh there. my god! <laughs> Crazy, right? But this nice. is what came to my mind. Yeah. See, it's isn't it so cool that, uh, <laughs> of course, because you are a photographer, already yeah. you, are, you have a very close connection to communicating with pictures. Yeah, That's wonderful, very nice. <laughs> uh, Susan, you want to share your list? I tell yeah, you I mean, order. I, yeah, I'll do it in the same. I can do it this okay. way, only where you are. Okay, place. all right. So, this one, you know, surprisingly, I, I just thought of the object, and that okay. was all that was tough. So, it was boat. I mean, okay. that's it. Okay. I knew it was a boat, and I could not think past it. Okay. Okay, then uh, the the next was, uh, you know, tree, but so basically what was happening is I was looking at the reflection trying to identify, which is the natural thing to do. Mm -hmm. which, uh, and it worked. It worked till my second <laughs> picture. Okay. Then, then the confusion set in because I don't know. Mm. And this is this. So I feel like where, this is where like night and day, you know, like I see two colors. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. there is. That's all I see. I saw mm -hmm. the color and I got stuck at that. Okay, mm -hmm. So there's night and day. Okay. And then this one, this one is like a pattern. Now, when I say pattern, like a print, like mm -hmm. that's what came to me, a bed sheet mm -hmm. print, you know, mm -hmm. two colors that, that absolutely um, do not, uh, I mean, you wouldn't, so uh, you would expect way. it on an, Indian, on an Indian bed sheet. Right, right, right. Okay. And then I had boat again. Okay. Because boat and then this, I don't know, but I saw a fish. Mm -hmm. Because I mm -hmm. so suddenly felt like fish or something like that to me. Okay. And the last one, you know, somehow because I think because uh, of the rains, I think of the last one as murky. Because I've seen too much of flood water this time. Right. Too much. And all of it is this color. Correct. Okay. <laughs> nice. Alka, how about you? Okay, so uh, now I wrote a whole uh, lot of words, not necessarily specific to each picture, but generally the impression that I got from all the pictures that you were flipping through. Okay. So I will um, read them out and then I will say which ones was, which I think was triggered off by which picture. Okay. Okay, so the first impression I got was that it's a very wavy kind of thing mm -hmm. and the shapes are very fluid. Like, you know, all the okay. shapes are very fluid. Uh, then the where is the picture? Oh, so also that the whole thing is very smooth and unblemished. Like there is no visible texture available. You know, like it's not uh, broken or rough or it's all a very smooth uh, surface kind of. All of thing. them. All of them. Yeah. Oh. So that is something that binds them all together. That all they are right. all. Okay. Okay, then also that they are all disjointed, but they all seem part of a whole. Okay. So there are broken bits, but they are all connected, like, you know, it's all one picture. Uh -huh. Then uh, the other thing is, uh, now this picture, this, the my the first reaction was a batik. It was yes. just like a batik print. Yes. So, so that was the first thing, because I've done batik. So when I saw it, it was like, okay, this was exactly like a batik. True. So that was it. Then um, the other one, this one was black and white. Okay. Was like, you know, like a study, just dark black and white. And right. mirror images of each other almost on yes. the two sides. True. And um, this one was, yeah, this one was ghostly, eerie, mysterious, like a horror a yeah. novel or something like, you know, Rebecca or something like that. Correct. That kind of and um, this one was like linear for some, you know, because it seems the shadows all seem to be in line, the mm. reflection. Mm -hmm. So this, the other first word that came was like linear. Mm. Um, then uh, continuous, that was another word that came. 
and depth somehow all the pictures give an impression of you know looking like like the surface is there but there is a lot of depth oh to huh. what you are seeing okay hmm, that's it okay yeah yeah and rhythmic and calming that was the other overall impression okay i yeah. like this that you gave a lot of words for the whole clump um, yeah so that but uh, you can actually yeah why not you have the freedom to see different things in the uh, in the set of pictures because the topic uh, is pretty much the same it is water and yeah. it's reflection in water so some part like uh, depth is going to be uh, through all pictures mm -hmm. and the moment you write these words then uh, now this is like almost a design uh, uh, designers way of going about it uh, but so we we would take the word and we would say uh -huh. okay, which are the different visuals that I can use for this word uh -huh. and the artist's way of going it would be to feel the picture uh -huh then put a word to that. So we are doing huh. the design process in reverse because for huh. us, the picture is paramount. Now, hmm. when we do a number of these pictures, which are not huh. necessarily representative, we will have we will start building a language of our own. We will start seeing words and ideas in, uh, in just color and just form. That is how you begin to move towards abstract painting. I would think that is a good way of moving into abstract painting. Um, I believe, though, for most people who do abstract painting, they uh, they may be good at their regular art, but with abstract paintings, it's almost like um, I can paint whatever and then I leave it for anyone to interpret the way it is. Um, I have been known to judge abstract painting as the work of mediocre artists. <laughs> uh, and I will stand by it because yeah. I have come across a lot of artists who I think are just too lazy to uh, build their skill as far as realistic art is concerned and they say okay you know what let me just slap some color anyway it's going to be in the lobby of a hotel who's going to bother looking yeah. at my realism I need to make money okay. and I totally get that so there is a place for abstract painting but if you can if you can really feel it and make some meaning or embed some meaning into it, you are satisfied that you are at least putting something out there that somebody might be able to pick and enjoy either the way you see it or the way they would like to see it. And on the rare occasion that you get to meet the person who sees that art and has an opinion, and then you can have a discussion that gives you a moment of such enrichment just for the exchange of two minds. So um, we um, we can choose one. The, the last painting that we have, the, oh, wait, I haven't shown you my words. They're pretty much the same. I'll go through the list myself. So this, again, the first thing it reminded me was of the monsoon in India. Uh, and uh, I love the rains, but this is usually the scene on the streets. I could, I can almost make out some poles or electricity poles or wires or something like that. So um, to me, this, I have written the word disturbing, but uh, I think I also wanted to write turbid. So unclear uh, things that are there, but not there. And in a way, it, it looks like a complicated relationship where everything is connected, but there is no clarity. The second one, even I saw a fish. So I saw a face and a fish. My pareidolia is very strong. So I saw... Oh, oh, wait a minute. Am I there or can you hear me? Everyone is frozen. Mm -hmm. Ah, she's back. Sorry, I don't know what went wrong. <laughs> oh. Yeah. What was the last thing that I shared with you? This one, yeah, with the 
Yeah, so even I, I saw a face actually. I saw a face in this. And I saw a fish here. And then when Susan said she saw a fish. Oh, I'm gone again? No. My signal is very dodgy because it's raining today. No. Hmm. Yeah, even your sounds are coming in. Okay. Okay. You can't understand it. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are uh, huh. it? It's raining quite a lot over here, so our signal is very dodgy. So please bear with me. All right. So we're here. Can you see the image? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So after Susan said she saw fish, I saw completely different fish. So first my fish was here. It was like a fish a child would draw. Then I saw this as the face of a person. And then I saw the face of a person being eaten by a fish, which is somewhere over here. And uh, every time I look at this picture, I see something else. So here I lo I'm looking at something that looks like the face of a gargoyle. Uh, and also this whole thing uh, rising, this dark patch rising up also looks like it's it could be a uh, smoke or an oil spill or something like that. Oh, okay, looks like I'm gone again. No, we can hear you. Can you? Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. All right, quickly then. The next one, this one, the only thing I could think of was Liquid USA. Yeah. <laughs> Just because the colors are so American. Yes. Um, and it could mean so many things. In most places, like you see that the red and blue connect in a few places and then there is this whole white between the blue and uh, red. We could put in so many meanings to this. The, the political divide, um, there is lack of communication, whatever. Then this one was a plain and simple fire and water. That's how I saw it because this looks like the flame and um, the way the blue comes into the red almost looks like somebody is splashing water onto the red. This to me also was dawn. So more uh, light on one side and the radiation moving the uh, uh, towards the top looked like dawn. This was flat out creepy to me. Uh, this was like something out of um, some true crime novel or podcast. And I was a little stumped with this because even to me, the only thing that stay was visible was the boat because there's so much of the boat. And those, uh, I kept thinking about why it is so because the shape and form, the lines of the boat are solid. They're there. You cannot argue that that, is, that doesn't exist. And to our minds, the reflection is what is uh, ephemeral. So I couldn't go beyond. Uh, and I'm telling myself, no, don't think of the boat. Don't think of the boat. So the only thing I could think of was a summer joy with the colors. There's a lot of, there's just a lot of innocence in that yellow. I think yellow is just like the color of a two-year-old or a three-year-old like they no care up to the age of 12 I think I could put yellow on them so I would like now uh, to either we can choose any picture that spoke with you and you literally have to recreate the shapes and try to paint them in the colors that you see it's pretty much a no-brainer so if we were to paint the 
let's take one of the easy ones. I think the first picture, our murky, disturbing picture of the flood. This one, let's see what, how this can be recreated. So for the moment, just ignore the parts where a lighter color comes over the darker color in a thin line like this or a texture like this. We have a large section where you have a light color as the background and then you have a dark color on top of it. So we can make just that part as well. Of course, you're free to attempt even the other parts. Hello. So suppose we attempt only the bottom part of this picture. Even that is fine, where you don't have to worry about drawing light lines on dark colors. Because for that, uh, we will have to dodge around the dark color or paint, sorry, dodge, paint the dark color around dodging the light color. So uh, in this case now, if we just work out a strategy, we can make um, like this base murky color. Try to ignore the dark lines completely. And we have a slightly darker patch towards the bottom. So the wash will be dark to light as it goes upwards. And then we have at least two more colors in that. You have a, a medium dark color and a deeper color. And then if you want, there are shades in between. So as you know, we have to start filling in the medium dark color in these patches. Now this patch, notice how it is light at the top and starts becoming deeper in this shape as it comes down. Then this whole thing can be the medium, uh, the darker shade of the medium color. And once that is painted, then you can put swatches of the deepest color through and merge it. So after this whole thing of emotional uh, words and whatnot, now we just break it down into what we see. Okay, shall we give this a shot? Now, one thing before we start also, something like this you can also do as mixed media. So you can use color pencils or crayons to create some of these lines if you want to. Uh, and you can use paper tape to give you the, uh, the borders. Uh, the best bit about this is that if your proportions are screwed up, it doesn't matter at all. Your lines can be all over the place. As long as you follow the curve, more or less, you should be able to get a nice um, reflection. Okay? All right, let's try it. My paper has an odd fold over here, so I'm going to paint on this side. I usually paint on this side so that if I feel I'd like to put it up, then I, I can just tear this section up. But that's not happening here today. This is an example of... Uh picture that uh, probably <laughs> doesn't appeal to one's uh, artistic, uh, you know, mm. like, for example, you know, like, um, sometimes you have to paint a picture you don't like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, and you have to do it for whatever reason you have to do it. So there is um, the interest part. There's yes. half your brain shutting down and saying, forget it, I don't like it. Yes. <laughs> <And> <laughs> 
other part yes, that very true. It has, it has nothing to do with what you like or you don't like. Correct. You must do it. You know. Yeah, so, this is school project like work. Yeah, yeah. But the funny uh, part about this kind of exercise is that I think somehow I often start these kind of exercises very um with half my half my mind uh -huh. and heart. And uh, at the end, I am absolutely invested. Yes. <laughs> True. I I did one. Um, I used to do this study in Avidya Valley when I I used to go as an external art teacher, um, and I had given the students a task, the senior students, this was the ninth and or eighth and ninth students. Um, they had to study an artist for three months in the first semester and second semester. First semester was international artist and second semester was, it was Indian artist. And they had three whole months to study and make a presentation. They uh, they could make it an audiovisual, they could make a poster, or they could just come and read out something, whatever. I left the presentation part to them. One girl, I remember her name was Arya, she she was given Yayoi Kusama. I must have mentioned this. So yes. she comes back and she says, I don't want to do this. All, all this lady does is polka dots. And I don't, I don't even think it's art. Why don't you give me a serious artist and, and give this polka dots to one of the boys because the boys are not serious about art because it was too feminine, I think. I don't know. Uh, I, I remember I was very tempted that Are Bapri now she's going to, if she doesn't like it, she's not going to do anything and that'll be her excuse. So I was very tempted to switch. But then I told her, why don't you just take a week and next week come and tell me that she is really meaningless so then we will switch. I'm so glad I I did that because the next week she on her own, she came and said, I read up and I find it quite fascinating. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'll use, I'll, I'll stick with my artist. Don't change her. So I, that time I felt that um, sometimes we reject things so soon we don't give them enough time in our brain even to just sit and marinate a little bit. And one thing I've found is that we never investigate why we don't like something. We 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 have labeled some stuff as like and dislike. And then like because, of course, it we know very easily how to explain that. But dislike, we don't even spend time and say, okay, this is why we dislike. And the more I think about it, they're not really opposites, liking and dislikes. They're just in different worlds from us. So something that is in our closer circle is something that we identify with, therefore we like it. But the dislike is just further away on the same plane. It's not at the opposite end very often. And the less we start seeing it as the opposite end, we can just see how much further we can expand our sphere of identification to all these different topics that currently we dislike and we might at least be able to empathetically understand what they're all about. So that way we keep ourselves open to a lot of influences, a lot of inspiration from otherwise rejected topics. Okay, so here we are. So I would advise you first to make a loose sketch of some of the forms so you establish some kind of geography in the painting. So we, here we have a diagonal and we have just wavy lines. 
There are so many lines over here that you might be very confused which ones to draw. My strategy is to draw the larger shapes. So you have this shape here. You have this shape here on the top right. Then you have this shape here. And the waves are, are actually related, but they're not really... Um, oh, why is this disappearing? Sorry. I'm going to draw this again. So you have this. Uh, you are have we going to do the whole picture, Aditi, or the cropped one? Whichever one, whatever you can, okay, you can like. Okay. So I'm just yeah. giving you the option, but I would like to just right. over everything. Right. So uh, the stuff that you, uh, often when we see a, a big picture with a lot of detail, we think um, it, it can be a little intimidating. But from that, you just look at the large shapes that you can tell and try to first paint those out. So you first identify these shapes and then you can build the smaller shapes. The moment you block this out, then you know that the rest you have to just pull them in in a particular color. All right. I'll share the screenshot so you know what I have blocked. Even this with the lines drawn is looking so nice. The orange lines. My lines are looking like intestines now. Intestines. I, well, nothing wrong with that. I think intestines yeah. also look like that. <laughs> okay, so we have a line that goes. Just make sure that your wavy line is not like a up and down, up and down rhythmic line. There's a, there's a weird shape over there. It looks like a ballerina doing a split or something. Yeah, you're right. And... Upside down, no? Right? No, right way up. Except right that I hated that elongated line. Hmm. And the two things on uh, her arm. Mm hmm. Then that first projection looks like a boob. Mm -hmm. And then on the other <laughs> side, her, her butt and the, like, you know, bend huh. of the knee and the other leg is outstretched. Feels like those in tests, no? Your Rorschach's. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you look long enough, you can see a whole lot of things. True. <laughs> I think my proportion is a little off. So that's another thing that actually frees me up. The moment I get the first wrong thing, oh. especially on a page where there are lots of shapes, uh -huh. the first wrong thing frees me up because then I can do what I want. Uh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So till then, I'm very particular that the line should be where it is you know as much 
a reflection of what is in the picture hmm and then I think when that's, i yeah get wrong then it frees me up to say okay now now let's put in all the lines it doesn't matter yeah. if that line was off and that was off and that's fine it will still think, look like yeah it's the saving grace of modern art yeah true you abandon perfection finally and then you you're free to now enjoy it Okay. Now here's something that I think you guys should pick up. Um, do you have a flat brush like this, like a half inch flat brush? Uh, in order to make nice washes, uh, using a flat brush can really help. We have been using the round brushes because we haven't been making too many washes really. But now maybe you should pick up a flat brush, maybe a bigger round brush also. Because for something like this, you will get a broader stroke. So you can come down quicker. Anything quick is a better idea. All right, so here we go. Recreating this color is going to be so much fun. Because... It's just mud. Now, I would suggest to be on the safe side. When you make the lightest color, also along with that, make the deeper shades. At least figure out what colors you want to mix to make the deeper shades. Right then, that's what I normally do. So I'll make one deeper shade. I've added a little bit of, looks like burnt uh, umber and maybe a little bit of viridian also in that viridian or this raw umber. Maybe a little bit of black or Ultramarine might also do. Yeah. So this is just to test. And if you want to make little color swatches. So this is the lightest shade that I have. If I were to concentrate it more. So if you make the lightest and the darkest shade, then you just keep adding the darker shade into the lightest shade um, so that you can you make the medium tones. You don't really need to make each tone in between. And as always, it helps to write what colors you have used to mix this just so that you can come back uh, and don't have to test all of it again. So in my case, I have created this using 
yellow ochre raw umber cerulean blue burnt umber and black and this is always what uh, since I always work with a already used palette there could be other shades in this so there could be stuff that I've not written here so when I make it the next time I do always keep that in mind and for this I have uh, same thing plus add black plus ultramarine and uh, what else did I add in this a little bit of viridian Okay, now for the wash. So this wash is slightly more concentrated at the bottom. So I'm going to start off with a very watery wash on top. So I've dipped into my color and then on to in the water. And as I bring it down, I will, I won't dip it in more water. Now we need to let it dry. The, I, I don't know if I have achieved the difference in the shade too much, but I'm, I'm not going to fiddle with this too much now. Okay, while our color is drying, I'm going to share some images with you. These are paintings using the same um, topic.
Okay, you must have seen this painting before. So this is, I'm, I'm just showing you these images so that we can chat till our color dries, our uh, wash dries up. Have you seen this painting before? No, I'm seeing it for the first time. Okay. Is Love it Mama. Dali? Is it Salvador Dali? Yes. Yes, it's ah, Dali. No wonder. I did a study on Dali during my photography. Oh, there you go. Mm. Okay. So what do you see in this? Uh, I'll tell you the name of the painting in a bit. I, I had got a print of this painting and I had framed it in our house because I just found it fascinating. What are the first things you see in the painting? I see elephants. Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's a reverse reflection of the elephants that turn into swans. Hmm. So this is, yes, the painting is called uh, Swans Reflected as Elephants. And since we are doing reflections, look at how he has juxtaposed dead tree trunks behind elephants. It's a very direct placement, very direct illustration. But in, in how it has been manipulated, it becomes creative. So somewhere, I'm sure he had a very, very bizarre brain because... I'm sure in his daily life, he could look at a teaspoon and think of it like a portal to another universe also. So I had to write a couple of pages on Salvador Dali because that was the artist assigned to me. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and I studied his life. Uh -huh. I don't know if you all know the story. <clears throat> Oh, my. Elder brother died at the age of four or five. Okay. And Salvador Dali. Is the reincarnation like uh, maybe I don't know what was available in those days, but maybe LSD and also the uh, the green uh, liqueur. I, I uh, absent. Yeah. yeah, that was very popular in mm. that era. So he grew up with this feeling and emotion ever since he was a child that he's somebody special. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, if you look at the how his whole life played out, he was mm. a supreme narcissist and everything that he, nobody could argue with him. Yeah. He actually yeah. left his village at a very young age and walked out. It's, it's interesting, but anyway, enough for today, I feel. <laughs> no, no, it's very nice. It's good. Yeah, it is interesting. So many really... things that come into the artist's life that are because yeah. of the experience. No, and it gives you some kind of a thing into his psyche, no? Correct. Yeah, like, because I... uh, he lived as a shadow of that rebirth yeah, theory which exactly. his mother put in his head. I'm sure it confused the child. And mm. he grew up to be this weird artist. Yes. Yeah. Because... And very, he had such vivid, uh, his language is so vivid and so out of uh, out of the world in a sense mm. that it it almost at every point, it seems to create a, um, or rather bridge the void between reality and that which can be or might be so it's yeah. challenging perspectives. So I'm sure it must come from... Yeah, it all comes history. from there. The same thing that... It, I mean, imagine how confusing it is for a child yeah. of three to be told that you are not you, but you are your brother. <laughs> reborn. 
Okay, so now um, I'm going to keep building on the layers, but moving from the, I'm using the same color as the second layer. I'm not making it darker. You don't really need to. So we can take a nice big fat brush for the top. I'm going to attempt to make that line the line in between, if I can. But first, maybe this part, yeah. So here's another trick that I often use as well. Wherever there are sharp lines, I will put in the color onto the sharp line to create that edge and then use your brush to wipe uh, sorry use a rag to wipe your brush and then with the damp brush keep spreading that color in so you get a very subtle light tone and a fuzzy edge to that dark color and in places like this, where we are showing a reflection, it helps to have an uneven, but a nice smooth blending of colors. So even in this case, I can apply my color because there's a dark line going from here. I'll break the shading somewhere here. I will deposit the paint on this side so that it sits in its concentrated form over here. And then turn it around, wipe the brush and just smooth it up. So I get a, a nice dark to light patch very easily. And you can create this pretty arbitrarily also. It doesn't always present itself, this kind of tonal shading across the picture. So say for example it's looking nice i could easily recreate the same in the bottom part as well just to add more interest so remember our painting is uh never going to be seen along with the reference image especially this one so at some point you have the liberty to change certain uh, bits in your painting for aesthetic purposes. The only place where you cannot do such thing, actually though, uh, people like Salvador Dali and Picasso have merrily gone and done that, is in portraiture. Add your own creative expression. <laughs> but we can't even say that. The way Picasso has played with faces, it's insane.
Okay, now I'm going to paint the top. And here I'm attempting to leave a light line around. So the, the light colored reflection is a distorted line along the same or similar contour as the edge over here that we've made. So you can follow this edge to some extent, but it's not parallel. So some places the line goes close to the wavy line that I'm painting right now. Some places it comes further away. And this is where that class that Susan did last time comes in handy. There is a rhythm in which you will see waves. So the light line is representative of another uh, or each of these is a ripple that is extending outward. Not, not the line on it, but the, the structure of the wave. So if we can see it as that, and then we can recreate that, your illusion starts becoming complete. That's all you need to do. So in a sense, this is, has been an easy-ish reflection to paint because it's fairly monochromatic. Now I'm adding a third layer to the same section, but now I'm painting it only in a few places. Okay, I'm sharing some more images for us to discuss.
Okay, have you seen this artist before? Uh, let me share. Sorry, I keep forgetting. Yeah. I've seen the painting, but I don't know who the artist is. I've seen the painting. No, even I don't know. Okay, so this is a graphic artist from... Uh, the Netherlands called MC Escher. And you might have seen some other graphics of his. His most famous uh, uh, painting, I would say, or graphic is called uh, Metamorphosis. Um, so these are all prints, really. So he would make woodcuts or lino cut and make prints out of... Mm -hmm. Now imagine how much it must have taken. This could be a lithograph as well. I'm not very sure. But this is another artist who had such an amazing... How he saw the world was really amazing. And again, I feel sometimes the ability to see past what is and what could be or what might be helps uh, immensely when you are looking at a subject from a different angle. So even this one, it's a, it is an upside down bird. And because of how the colors have been printed, you see the trees before you see the, um, the earth around it. And then it's so bizarre that he chose to show in two levels nature and uh, man-made but all in the same plane so you see tire tracks you see footprints everything that uh, shows of or indicates human presence but in that there is a puddle which reflects only that which is non-human so it's almost like he is liquefied a, set, a portion within the world in which he wants to show you another world that exists there's a it looks like a hole it looks like a mirror there are so many things that you can interpret from this i'll show you his metamorphosis also because this this mural really is at the hague so if you ever have the opportunity to go to The Hague, you should um, go to the post office, the central post office at The Hague. Because um, on the walls, it's like 12 feet and above, I think. There's a huge mural that shows all sorts of metamorphosis. And being a graphic designer, I loved how he could he has seen these shapes and just amazing. So I'll start you off with just a, a little thing. And this is relevant because uh, you'll see why. So while I'm sharing the series, maybe you can just check these out on your phone first and then I can speak about them. That is so interesting. This is like tessellation, no? Uh, tessellation, yes. But yeah, so interesting. So, remember this, uh, he had one picture of the dawn, hmm. which was in a way monochromatic. 
this one. And then we had another picture. Now here you see how the light color. Uh, Aditi, uh, it's again your yeah, WhatsApp feed yeah. on the screen. Oh, okay. It's grayed out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so the light color almost trespasses into the black and likewise. And if you look at metamorphosis, it is built pretty much exactly in the same vein where he's taken mm -hmm. whites and converted them into something meaningful, but they trespass into the area meant to be black. And the, that which is black comes into white, but it is, it's almost as if while we are intruding into your space, we want to make ourselves useful. So it's not just uh, that the color intrudes in any odd form. It takes the form of a fish and the white takes the form of a ship. And the entire series of metamorphosis starts like that. He starts off with letters that go into these blocks that just and turn around and become a beehive which then becomes uh, these are lizards. Then they become another beehive, then fish. And every time you see this, you notice that it's almost as if in the negative space of the bees, the fish are evolving. So as the bee devolves, the fish evolves and becomes more and more distinct. And then in its negative space, it's like, instead of saying negative space, if I would say in the space left behind by one, the other emerges and evolves. It's I just love how, how he has used space and form and made it, made every little bit so meaningful. And this whole thing is painted up on the wall. This must be maybe four feet tall, six feet tall. I can't really remember. And unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of that time. Because I when we went, I didn't I don't think I had a cell phone or we didn't have international cell phones. And ends right back into the chessboard that we started out with. So here's taking some something as abstract as ripples and water and then taking it into a more graphic representation. So for those of us who are so fixated in seeing something real and cannot get past that, you can transpose. You can take something that you see as a reflection of something real and then to add your creative uh, <laughs> yes, identity to that, you could easily say, instead of this, what else can I see in it and make sense out of it? And then if I can make this, then how can I expand it further to make it more enriching? And if that is enriching, how can I either replicate it or to keep building on it so that I can make that into uh, an identifiable style of my own? Aditi, I have to leave now. Thank you so yes. much. I'll finish off with the recording. Bye, Bye yes. everyone. Have a nice so, weekend. Yeah, Bye. so I, I trust that you'll be able to finish it on yes, your own, right? I will. And I'm yes. there this afternoon as well for the yeah. travel class. Yeah. Uh, today, um, are we starting travel today? Because it's still in July. So I'll ask Yeah, so you. let's start in August, I feel. Yeah, yeah. Let's start yeah. next week. Yeah. yeah, all right. Okay. All right. Thank all right. you. Um, Aditi, okay. what's the name of this artist? The... This is M C Escher. Uh, so M dot C dot um, E S C H E R. And I would highly recommend picking up a book if you find any in any library or Amazon, because very often these books uh, are either very expensive, so we don't buy them, and then they go out of print and we don't get them. So this one artist. I think is very inspiring. You should pick pick it up. 
Okay. okay. So I will see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Bye. 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 Have a good weekend. You Bye. too. Bye. Bye. Wish your cat the best. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye.